and welcome to Don't Die Before You're Dead. I am your host, Mary McCartney, and this is where we talk about all things related to living the life that you are meant to live. Question is, do you know the life that you are meant to live? How do you determine that? For some, it's a matter of looking at their life in the past and seeing where they want to go and how they're going to get there. And we always talk about meeting the fork in the road. Don't know about you, but I have had a situation where sometimes there's multiple forks. I can do this, or I can do this, or I can do this. The choices, how do you decide? I have found through my own personal experience, finally, that keeping a journal is a way to help me kind of face some of those decisions that I need to face. Looking at what decisions I've made in the past can help me look at the ones that are facing me now. What have been my outcomes? In journal writing, there are many, many benefits. And so some of us have come to it a little late in the game. Some of, them have, some of us have been writing journals for years. I think a lot of it has to do with the popularity and the understanding of the benefits of journal writing when we were a lot younger. That wasn't so much my case. Never really talked about that. My parents never did that. At least I didn't see them doing that. Um, what they did behind the door, closed doors before bed, who knows? But there was no, never any talk when I was growing up about journal writing. It has kind of come into its own as being really an important part of sorting out where we're going, what we're doing. Some people will actually look at, say, at doing um, their journal on the computer. They will type it all up and they will save it in a file. It's less cluttery, they'll think, than keeping multiple journals around. On the other hand, having studied graphology or handwriting in the past, I learned how important it was to actually write. Now, the cursive writing was the primary objective at the time, where we formulated letters a certain way, how we move from one word to the next, our connections, even our connections letter to letter was important. Whether we actually closed in our letters like O and P, do we actually finish the letter itself? Those people who study, <clears throat> excuse me, graphology, will do so for two different reasons, at least the ones that I'm familiar with, will be one will be identity. Is this the same person that wrote this piece that wrote this other piece? A comparison can be made. Are the indicators the same? However, in that process, the indicators they're looking at have a lot to do with characteristics as well. Did you know that even the slant of your writing will indicate whether you're kind of outgoing or whether you're a little bit more reserved? So perhaps you'd be looking at getting a sales position. If you wrote absolutely straight up and down or a little bit towards the left slant, given the fact that you're a, uh, a right-handed writer, that might indicate that you're kind of reserved and you're not really a fan of people. So going out into the sales force might not be a good career choice for you. So the handwriting is very telling for those of people who might be looking at it. I've told some of my friends and uh, they're kind of not showing me their writing too much anymore. Or when you look at how you write, the experts in graphology will tell us that we can actually develop some different characteristics by our intentional reshaping of how we write. It is really a direct path from our brain. If you think about it, from our head right down our arm to our, the end of our hand, we are expressing ourselves. And perhaps maybe you didn't realize that you're expressing yourself more how you write as opposed to maybe just saying what it is that you think and feel. That is very beneficial, not just for other people, but for ourselves. We can adapt our learning of our handwriting to the things that we would like to have. So how we write is going to be as important as what we say or how we go about writing. Some of us will have a 
visual path to our brain. That's the way we think and learn and retain our information through our visual senses, through our eyes, we can see things. And for those of us, I'm very visual. Sometimes when I'm reading a book and I can go, I want to go back and find a passage. I can do that because I can remember whether it's on the left-hand side of the page or the right-hand side, and I can kind of flip through. So being visual helps me in that aspect. But I also know that when I go somewhere where there's a lecture and I want to learn something, I need to make notes because that's my primary path to my brain. Now, my husband was an auditory learner. He would learn best through what he hears and his retention was very good. And sometimes that could cause a bit of a problem because I didn't make notes about what we said to each other, but he would remember what he heard. But auditory people are quite capable of retaining much more through their hearing senses. And then of course the third brain, the third path to the brain is the um, actual kinesthetic, the actual movement of <clears throat> maybe putting um, putting something together, the directions and doing the actual hands-on um, or make doing something while you learn. Um, I've been to conferences, major conferences, where we have actually played with, um, what do you call them, uh, pipe cleaners to make different gadgets so that we enhance our learning through our actual um, movement of our hands and whatnot, that we our retention would be better. Try it sometimes. You might find that if you really need to remember something, to find something to do with your hands. And that could be unlimited to your imagination, I suppose. We found, my husband and I found that out to be very true with us. We took this long trip and someone had given us a book that they suggested that we, we could enjoy on our trip. So we decided in some of the boring sections of our, our road trip that we would take turns reading to one another. So if my husband drove, I would read to him. If I drove, he would read to me. And sure enough, when we discussed the book at the end of the day, we found out that by avoiding or not going through our primary paths to our brain, uh, when I read to my husband, he remembered because he was a, a auditory learner. I couldn't remember what I'd read. Found it, well, no, that's not true. I could remember what I read because I'm visual. The other way, it messed it up because if he read to me, I'm not auditory and I couldn't remember, but he wasn't visual. So he had a struggle. So we found that by, um, you know, by working with our primary paths, we were able to discern that and learn from it. So how does that help with journal writing? Well, there are many benefits with journal writing, and I'm going to segue off of this, you know, visual auditory process that what I would suggest is sometimes if you are auditory, but you're writing out a journal, that reading it aloud is going to um, enhance that or help you retain it. So think about that, how best you learn. But journals are primarily a very visual, but turn them into auditory for yourself. Or you can go back and read them at a later time. I'm not suggesting that you have to read them every time you've written something. But there are a lot of benefits. It helps to organize our thinking. And in doing that, it also helps with our memory. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm just struggling with my memory these days. I don't know that it's so much an age thing, but primarily it could be. I've always kind of struggled with memory, but by writing things down and having that visual uh, component, it does help with my memory, but it also helps with my organizing my thoughts. Um, I don't just write words. Sometimes I will doodle and do some little pictures to illustrate my thinking. And the components of both of those things, the doodling, the drawing, the words, all come together to help put my, put my thoughts out there. Sometimes we need that, no pun intended, like the arm's length distance, step outside of it in order to get a, a, the big picture look at it. So it helps our memory, it helps our concentration, and it helps us to focus. Do you have a tendency to kind of be all over the place? Uh, do you suffer from what do they call it? Shiny object syndrome or even um, squirrel? I do. 
And so by sitting down and, and journaling, it helps to keep me focused on what it is I'm primarily wanting to, to think about and any decisions that I might make working at like the pros and the cons. If I get to the place where I can actually focus, um, I can find that it also will free up my brain to present some other options. Sometimes we're thinking sort of superficially up here at the top of our heads, whereas the longer we leave it, um, the more ideas or the more thoughts come. And it's kind of like the ripple effect you know, you throw a little pebble in and out it goes. Our thinking can be like that as well. That one thought leads to another, leads to another. And by taking the time to separate yourself from the hubbub, the, the, the activity that's going on around you, by doing that, you're able to focus entirely on whatever it is you're, you're thinking about at the time and allow yourself the opportunity to go deeper in your thoughts. You might be surprised at what kind of ideas come forward. You might be surprised to find that you own, you thought you only had two choices only to find out that perhaps there's another option, you know, the middle of the road kind of one, you know, this is an extreme, that's an extreme and you might find, you know, here's one right down the middle, <coughs> excuse me. So by allowing yourself that deeper thinking, then that embeds the learning as well. The reasoning, the rationale, so that when it comes to a time where you want to explain why you chose to do what you did, why you, how you, why you chose to do what you did do, then you have the opportunity of being able to explain it more fully because you have thought about it that much more fully. It also helps in the sense of a, a kind of a therapy. Our head, our brain, our thoughts, they're all over the place and it gets cluttery. And it just, it's like walking in quicksand, you know, it's really, or thick mud. It's hard to kind of put one foot in front of the other because you're bogged down so much. It's a kind of therapy in the sense that you could become your own therapist by writing all your thoughts out. A long time ago, when writing letters was uh, the norm, people would suggest if you had something to say that you could write out this letter, especially if you're angry with somebody, write out this letter and vent and underline and score and do all that sort of stuff. Another part of the handwriting graphology, if you do a lot of caps and underlining and exclamation marks, it, people feel your tension and your anger. But by writing those letters out and then sometimes after you purged all of that, then you realized, hey, you know, I, I, I feel better. I, I'm de-stressed. I'm not as angry as I was. I can think more clearly. And then they advised, you know, never send that letter the day you write it, you know, leave a couple of days or just simply get to the place where maybe you're just going to burn it because you purged all that out writing can be a lot like that too. Um, I would suggest that perhaps, um, you know, just some discretion is needed as far as leaving your journals out and about for other people to read. It's not the same thing as being able just to toss it all out if you've got you know, years of keeping these journals. However, it gives you an opportunity to lay it out, lay out your thoughts, do the back and forth, become your own devil's advocate, if you will, play both sides. Am I right? Am I wrong? You might find, as you're thinking more deeply, that different positions present themselves, different perspectives, different points of view. And you might find that however you felt, stress-wise, anxious, anxiety, depression, you might find that through that process that it works its way out of your system. Hopefully it'll show you the path to take, which fork of the road that you want to be on. Sometimes we hang around with people that aren't necessarily helpful to us. And it might show us that there's a pattern here. When our remembrances, when our memory <laughs> isn't as sharp as perhaps it once was, we don't catch the patterns. But in a journal, we might see that. 
you'll end up writing something and say, whoa, this feels really familiar. I wonder if I have felt this way before. I wonder if I've had this experience with someone before. I'm going to go back and, and take a look. See, I, I remember us getting together like six months ago. What, what was it like then? So there's a lot to be said for journal writing. Not only are you able to craft your handwriting and look at some of your habits. Um, speaking of which, habit forming is not a bad thing, providing you choose the good habits to, to form. It's about the discipline. To form habits, it takes discipline. And you need discipline to be journaling. You know, every day is the ideal, maybe before you go to bed. I posted on my Don't Die Before You're Dead Facebook group, which if you haven't joined, I would certainly invite you to come and join us and, and share your thoughts on some of the things that I'm doing and throw out there. So it's facebook.com and the groups slash um, don't die before you're dead. No apostrophes, unfortunately. Technology doesn't allow for that. Um, but I was writing yesterday about sleep patterns and how some people, especially as they get older, they have difficulty getting through the night and sleeping through the night. And I asked, you know, my people, like my folks there, like, what's your sleeping like? Are you good? I am blessed with being a good sleeper. And of course, that really helps when I'm traveling around in my van, that my bed in my van is as comfortable as my bed at home. So I sleep really well. But some people are saying they're up and down through the night. And sometimes it's uh, damp, the old whatchamacallit, and sometimes it's a matter of a busy brain. Have you been there? Have you had times where you just can't shut the thinking off? The habit, the discipline of doing a journal, the last 10 minutes, whatever, before you go to bed, might be thought clearing, decluttering, so that you ease your mind into into a better sleep pattern. The experts tell us that we do sleep better if we have a sense of routine. Washing our face, brushing our teeth, taking out our contacts, which is what I need to do, and maybe brushing through your hair, and just that whole mindset of getting ready to wind down, get off the screen, whatever that happens to be, TV, laptop, phone, Get off the screens for a while. They say that's not really helpful for a good night's sleep. But journal writing, when you get to the place where you're able to purge all of that thinking, all of that clutter in your head, you may find will lead to at least being able to fall asleep much easier. Staying asleep is a different thing, but settling down and, and starting that sleep process. Now, as I've mentioned, um, Journaling has become more important to me over the years. I was a late starter. At least I started. And if you haven't yet, perhaps maybe you'd like to think about some of the things that I said here and give it a thought as far as, you know, making even if start with as simple as, you know, making a to-do list. And, and I, I'm not a fan of to-do lists because I find the next day I've got my to-do list, I do everything else but what's on the to-do list. And then I need to add things because I certainly did something. I just didn't, didn't do those things. So not a fan of to-do lists, but some people are really good at that. And again, it's a decluttering, a getting rid of things. So if you haven't started with a journal of sorts, May I suggest that it would be very beneficial for the things that we've kind of talked about and take a look at starting. You might have some difficulty getting started at a comfortable everyday pace, but habits take time, keep working at it. Check out the benefits and see, do you feel better? Are you doing better through that process? So this is something I have begun doing and in order to to, for myself, I made a Don't Die Before You're Dead journal to go with my Don't Die Before You're Dead book. And I logged everything on my trip last year. That is just a journal specifically for my trip. I have other journals. 
but that one was specifically detailing what I did on my trip each day as a great reminder. So I've been creating a number of different journals. I've got one that I've created that's for the road trip where I kept all my mileage and everything. I've got a walking log book. I've done a number of those. And if you're interested, then reach out to me and I'd be glad to share with you what I've done. I'm creating a new web page called don't die before you're dead .ca, where I'm primarily just focused on this mission to let people know that, you know, life is meant to be lived. Get off the couch, get out of the house, go find something to do. Go find other people to do it with. Social is so important. Don't stay home by yourself. If you're like me, widow, that, you know, primarily at home is to be alone. Uh, don't stay home alone more than you know, you're comfortable with. You won't find, <laughs> my husband <laughs> told my, my youngest son, he's, when we moved, we, he was the only one that came with us because of his age. The others were grown up, more grown up. And uh, my husband would say to him, you won't find friends in your room, which of course is true. So my whole mission, my whole plan is I encourage you to go find life, live it fully, do what you can while you can, for as long as you can. And you will find that, you know, whatever that happens to be, you'll be healthier mentally and physically for it. So reach out to me, let me share what's going on. I am traveling out to the East Coast in another month and I'm so excited about it. That'll be the kind of last part of Canada. I don't know about the, the territories that's sort of on the horizon at the moment. But reach out, I'll share with you my journals. I'm always interested if someone has a specific topic for a journal. I've got personal development, I've got health and wellness, trackers, a self-care diary. Um, anyway, reach out and give me a shout. And thank you for joining me. I am so excited to have the people that are sharing with me on my, on my website and on my podcast. So you take care and until next time, don't die before you're dead. Take care now.